Seriously, SpongeBob? Welcome to RimWorld. Pick the crash landed start for your first few games, and Cassandra Classic for your storyteller. Difficulty is up to you, as is commitment mode, but the ability to reload is quite helpful when you're learning. Now you have to generate a planet. I won't go too into it, but I will say that when picking a place to land, you can see the details of the landing spot on the left. As long as you pick a small or a large hill temperate forest, you should be fine. Last, you need to choose your starting characters. You choose from a set of eight. In the crash landed start, you pick three. Characters have randomly generated stats. On the left, you can see backstory, the activities a character is incapable of, and their traits. The backstory helps generate stats. Pay close attention to the incapable list. Traits can be both good or bad. On the right, you can see health and relations. Some things like scratches don't matter much, but characters with addictions can be a problem, as they'll suffer from withdrawal quite quickly unless you get them another fix. Relations don't usually do too much unless there's a negative relationship, in which case you shouldn't take two hostile characters together. Last are skills. Skills have a level and a passion. The level is how good a character is at performing tasks using that skill, but passion is what really matters. A character with no passion for a task will develop that task's skill level extremely slowly. A passionate character, on the other hand, will develop the task's skill quickly. If you can choose between a skilled but unpassionate character and a passionate but unskilled character, always choose the passionate one. Make sure to pick a party of three that can do just about everything. If you don't like the stock of characters you started with, you can always re-randomize them until you like them. There's no penalty in doing this, which brings into question why you can't just customize your characters. Luckily, you can. You can get the EDB Prepare Carefully mod off of the Steam Workshop. Let's do this. Welcome to the Rim World. The first matter of business is not dying. Your characters will have to weather both the elements and each other. You start with a small amount of food, but you should still plant crops early. I'm personally quite partial to strawberries, as you don't need to cook them, saving you both the labor and the need for a skilled cook. Also, they taste delicious. The next danger is the wildlife. Most maps have at least a few predators on them. It's best to engage them from a distance, since most wildlife can only attack within melee range. Soon you'll have to worry about the weather. If it gets too hot or too cold, your characters will begin to suffer from heat stroke or hypothermia. Naturally, you can avoid heat stroke by using cooling and hypothermia with heating. You can cheaply cool an area using the passive cooler, and cheaply heat using a campfire. However, it's best to use powered heaters and coolers as soon as possible. Next up is raids. Armed and dangerous groups will try to attack your base, steal your things, and burn your crops. When a raid happens, don't let any characters wander alone. If a character is downed, the raiders might kidnap them. Early on, build sandbags. If there's a choke point, you can build a trap maze. Trap mazes also work quite well against wildlife. The final and perhaps greatest danger to your characters is themselves. Every character has a mood. The worse it gets, the more likely they are to break. Psychological breaks can manifest themselves in many ways, from a character hiding in their room to assaulting and even murdering other characters. You can keep moods high by giving every character a nice room and meeting all of their needs. Look what I've got! Rectangles! Not just any rectangles, candy bars! The design of your base is important, as small inefficiencies can quickly build up into big ones. Initially, you might want to build a single mega room that acts both as a barracks and production facility. This is good early on, but characters don't like sharing rooms. Even worse is that production facilities make the room ugly, making the characters even more unhappy. You should try to build each character their own room. The higher quality the furniture, the nicer the room. Making a room physically larger is also good. I'd recommend linking rooms next to each other, and having vents between them. This means that you can climate control all of them from only a single or a few climate control systems. When making buildings in general, I'd recommend avoiding wood, as it's incredibly vulnerable to burning. No one wants their whole base burnt down. Most foodstuffs spoil. To prevent this, you should build a walk-in freezer. To do this, make an enclosed space with two coolers. As long as the room is at zero degrees Celsius or below, the food inside won't spoil. Set one cooler to minus five degrees, and the other to minus one degree. This setup means that if one cooler can't keep the room at zero or below, the other will pick up the slack. You don't want both set to minus five, since it means both will consume power at times when you only need one. As for the rest of your base, look and see what other people have made, or experiment to make your own designs. That's where the fun of RimWorld is found. Sooner or later, you'll start to want nice things. To get these nice things, you'll need production facilities. Different facilities use different skills, and consume different materials. Alternatively, you can trade for these nice things. Traders will come by your base every once in a while, with different traders buying and selling different things. For the nicest things, you'll need technology. Researching technology is straightforward. 
Just have a research table, select the technology you want, and as long as the character is using the table, you'll research the technology. Naturally, you'll want to expand your colony with new characters. This can be done most easily by waiting around, as new characters will show up and join all the time. Another way is to recruit prisoners. If you have prisoners and treat them well, you can try to recruit them. Some prisoners are nearly impossible to recruit, while others are quite easy. Either way, a character with better social skills will be more successful at recruiting. You aren't confined to your one base. You can travel the world in a caravan. There are all sorts of things you can do with a caravan, such as going to other bases to trade or raid. You can even form additional settlements using a caravan. For this last part of the video, I'm going to offer you two challenge runs. The first is to survive on the ice caps. This requires slow, meticulous, and well-planned play. The second challenge is to play as cannibal raiders, only ever eating human flesh. Remember to make yourself a nice people parka with the skins. If you play Kenshi, you'll know exactly what to name this faction. That was RimWorld. Feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments, I'll get back to you pretty quick. Up next is... Well, if you play Paradox games, you know what's next. See you then. Oh.